All right, out here piddling with the 720, try to get out that out bale some hay. Luckily, I don't have any hay down yet, and there's no, or, so it can't get rained on. But I scattered some bales out here in the yard to try it before I uh, decided to take it to the field, which is a good thing I did because it was working okay last year, but it wasn't as good as I'd like it to be. And so the first thing I did is I went in and I. Howard Younger was telling me that if I braid, if these needles got a groove war in them, it won't pull the ball. When it changes balls of twine, it really, it won't pull the knot through. It'll pull apart sometimes. So I took the needles off and brazed them up, and then polished them back out a little bit. You know, so it's nice and smooth again. I got that fixed, and then readjusted the needles to the knotter, and it still wouldn't tie worth a crap. So, um, you know, it'd go three or four bales tie fine and then it would miss one and this knotter was doing pretty good it was just it was more this side than this side I'd say 95% of the time it was this side that would miss the knot um, so I messed you know with the twine discs and that's what I'm gonna adjust now um, so that was yesterday so anyway I and the conclusion I finally came to because it was uh, you know not running real it just wasn't consistent and the conclusion I came to this piece has been replaced um, and this one has a little bit of a groove worn here less than this one and I thought the bill hook and you can see it's got a little bit of play in it you know moves back and forth a little bit and this one moves back and forth a little more than this one but uh, this one was a lot worse than this one was I mean there's about a quarter inch it could twist uh, from the tip of the bill hook now it's only about a sixteenth of an inch and so what I did is I had to disassemble the whole thing. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do. Um, and I'm glad I did it now instead of trying to do it out in the field when I'm trying to bale the hay. But uh, I took a shim out from this side and moved it over to here <clears throat> to try to move this gear uh, closer to the knotter, you know, so that there's less, these things have less room to move. And I think that helped out some. I've tried it at ties. My when it was idling, like if I tied a knot when it was, the tractor was idling, it would tie it every time. But once I revved it up is when it started to have a problem. Um, and it got worse at higher RPM. So I just, so I think what was happening, that stuff was moving around and sometimes it just wouldn't be timed quite right when it needed to tie. And um, so yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I messed with the twine disc tension and the bill hook tension on both knotters and I think I got those set pretty well but um, I'm going to retime the twine disc here a little bit because now that I've tightened it up it's out a little bit. They say, you can see this, I've got, I don't have a 710, 720 service book. I have one for a 62T which is about, which would be early to mid 60s. This is an, about a 72. Um, and they say on a 62T, you need to have a, about an eighth inch clearance between the, the rake here that I'd call it. I can't remember what they called it in the book. Twine disc holder maybe. Between this piece and the left edge of the notch on the twine disc. And that eighth inch isn't very big, but that would let some twine flow through. This one is closer to what it should be, but it's I think that's too close because I don't think... That twine doesn't lay in there like it normally does. So I'm gonna open this one up just a little bit and I'm gonna close this one a little. And I don't, you know, eighth inch, I'm not 100% sure on what that should be because I don't have a, a 720, you know, that's for a different knotter. And they did change that knotter some between the 62T and the 710 here. So to move this twine disc, you gotta loosen this thing up. And this worm gear's on a tapered shaft, which runs up to here. And this thing was also loose. I mean, I could really turn that. Now it's tight today. You know, I've re-shimmed it. I'm gonna get that loosened up. I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna tap that thing over a little bit so that it's overlapping just a little bit there. And then it depends on where you 
set this worm gear because you can see that'll change the timing quite a bit too so I always roll it back like that um, so that it's because it's going to turn like it's going to turn counterclockwise if you're looking at it like this and the gears and the twine disc goes like this so I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it back like that tighten this up here then and that's on a tapered shaft so And I had to try this a couple, I did this already once yesterday to try to fix it before I tore the knotter apart and I had to do this a couple times to get the setting I wanted. But anyway, there's that, we'll see, I run it, to make it tie a knot and see how it does. I don't think knotters get terribly worn out. People think knotters are worn out, but after doing all this, I, or, you know, people say they don't run you know, they got a sweet spot in them, and I think it's more or less if you just disassemble the knotter and reshim everything, it would probably fix a lot of it. And you know, things can get pretty worn out before you'd ever have to replace parts because you know, there's shims on each side of everything, and so as long as there's shims on each side, you should still be able to shim it up and take play out and whatnot and make it keep working. Ideally, you know, I'd like to take this thing on the bench, take it all apart, clean it up, and reshim, you know, these shafts and everything but I don't have time to do that. Maybe next winter I'll do that, I don't know. You know, if I had some, some ordered a bunch of shims from Agco, you know, correct shim pack, you know, the shims for everything, and I could, and they give specs. Or if I had a 720 book, they would have specs for that. So that's, but that's the way it is. Got my approved punch here. The reason that doesn't turn real even is because it's got twine jammed in it right now, which it's supposed to. Back that thing up a little bit. Try that and see what that So I'm gonna throw a little hay in it and let it tie at a slower speed and make sure it's gonna work now and then we'll come around and do it again. I wasted a lot of twine yesterday. <laughs> Today's Thursday, and I was thinking about mowing hay yesterday, but it rained again, so I didn't do that. Come on, get in there. So we'll try that and see. Got a couple flakes in it anyways. come back to you here and I guess we get this straightened out all right it did tie it just didn't get it off the bill hook for whatever reason so try it again here and see if we can I had to readjust the flying disc again on the right knotter so did that I think if you try to make the bales too short it kind of messes with it too
I see why people like wire tie. I'd rather deal with twine in the barn because I've had twine rust in our humid climate and then it's just hard to pull it off the bale. But, well. Try this again here. Break open another bale. the bill hook which in the Oliver book means that the twine disc still in time right so well we'll see if we can get it all right I think I finally got it here I think I think part of my problem was I didn't have the needle quite in the right position so I moved it around a couple times and I think I've got it tying pretty good now it's tied I've tied probably eight of them or so without missing it wide open throttle so 540 I'm going to use some fresh hay. I about wore this hay out. It's not making a very good bale. And it doesn't flow in the baler very well either. Down a little more. Not too much. Try that and see. But anyway. So yeah, I'm going to try it again here and get some fresh hay and string it out in a windrow. Alright, got another windrow made over there. We're going to try it out here. giving me trouble decided it was okay but so that's good that one's working all right where the heck oh you're kidding me Bring it up now. We'll try it one more time. I don't know what happened there, but I don't know. all right, we're gonna try this again here. Thank <laughs> you. 
strings and we're still missing. Now we got other problems. All right, third time's charm. It wasn't pulling the knot off the bell hook, so I uh, loosened the bell hook a bit and uh, put the wiper arm down closer to the bell hook. Alright, let's see if we're going to use an Oliver Baylor or if we're going to have one for sale here. Let's see, one, two, 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 and we tied one knot and we still have a problem. Well, I think finally got her working. I think. The, uh, it's kind of like some of them electrical problems. You don't ask why. You just uh, go with it when it starts working and don't look back. The first problem I ever had, or one of the first thing I did, uh, other than the twine dogs that come around there, that was the very first thing I had to do to the knotter when I got it last summer. The second problem I had was the twine was too loose coming out of the box and it wouldn't keep it tight enough, you know, and it pulled the needles and it'd kind of move around there. And the Oliver book doesn't say much about it that I've got, but the, I've also got a new Holland knotter book that's pretty descriptive and all knotters are the same principles behind them, all the same, so it works. And they mentioned something about the twine being too loose in it and I was like, oh yes, well, sure enough, I tightened, put a new, put a new bolt in there and tightened up the twine on that side which goes to this knotter and now it's been working here for a little bit so next thing we can do is just take it out the field and try it i'm going to go ahead and get the new holland baler ready just in case you know we got rain coming or something i ain't got time to work on it but i don't want to know how much twine i burned through doing all that yeah, not as much as i thought anderson kettle i'm going to try out your knot tying um well you tie knots and see if it uh see if it works okay that ball of twine is about out to there so that's about how much i use but hey if it works i can sacrifice a little twine some people say oh it's because i'm using not using the old cis twine i'm using a plastic twine i've never been able to tell the difference we've ran sisal twine and this plastic twine through that new Holland baler we got through both the new Holland balers and could never tell the difference. So I think that yeah, I, yeah, I can't ever just tell it. I can't ever tell the difference. So I run the plastic twine. But anyway, this video is probably a little long enough for me screwing around mindlessly with the knotter. So well, hopefully the next video will be mowing hay. So thanks for watching.